church planter can walk 20 miles in a day. Give him a bicycle and he can go three times as far and be three times as effective. God bless you and thank you so much for joining me once again as we continue our chronological study through the entire New Testament. And our study takes us back to James chapter one as we're working our way verse by verse through James. Uh, verse number 12 is where we left off last time. James writes, blessed is the man, or blessed is a man rather, who perseveres under trial. And we established right from the beginning of this uh, letter that uh, James was writing to a persecuted people going through a trial, to the 12 tribes who were dispersed abroad. And we're making an assumption, but it's based upon some biblical evidence that he's writing to the, the Jewish believers who had been dispersed in connection with the, 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 the uh, persecution of uh, Stephen when he was martyred. And uh, so they're scattered all over the place. And, uh, you know, obviously it's a big trial. You've left your livelihood behind. You left your house behind. You left your furniture behind. Who knows what else you left behind? And now you're living, you know, as a vagabond, uh, as it were, and, you know, it's no fun, right? So I think that's the trial that they were enduring at the time. I think that this second mentioning of trials here within the first few verses is also evidence of that. This is not just some little trial that maybe we would count as a trial in our lives. Oh, you know, my water heater broke and I had to get it uh, replaced. This is a trial of uh, greater proportion. Why do I say that? Well, let's keep reading. Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial, for once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Now you say, well, how, 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 how does that give you uh, reason to think that this was a greater trial than a, you know, a broken water heater? Well, I think it's obvious from this verse that the promise of the crown of life is just a, another way of saying eternal life, the gift of eternal life, inheriting eternal life. Why? Because that is something that has been promised to those who love God, okay? And in this case, James says, once you've been approved, or as another version says, after you've passed the test, you will receive the crown of life, okay, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Just think about it now. It's not maybe as clear as we'd like it to be, but I think, you know, we can make a pretty good conclusion here from what James wrote. Have you ever gone through a tough time? Well, let's just take the water heater example. Your water heater broke, you know, you had to go for a couple of days without hot water till you got it replaced. Um, you know, you persevered. Did you really persevere? Would that really be under the category of perseverance? Well, pretty short perseverance. Uh, after it was all over, if you did persevere, did you feel like you received a crown of life? Is there anything that you had as a result of that small trial that you could say, oh, that's like the crown of life? And um, did I prove to God through that trial by the enduring of it and the persevering during the days when my water heater wasn't working and it was down? Did I prove my love for God, you know, to the degree that whatever that crown of life is, that's why I got it? See, so I think you can see that all the language here is indicating that, that this is uh, the promise of eternal life, the crown of life. It only goes to people who prove their love for God during their times of trial, and only after they have persevered and they have passed the test do they receive that crown of life, which is promised to all those who love God. Okay, so see, this is a, 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 a trial of greater proportion than just the little things that we often go through and refer to as trials, which they're trials, but it's not the kind of trial that these folks are going through. Uh, maybe a trial, a, cont a contemporary trial that we might 
find somewhat comparable is when you come to Christ and you lose your friends and uh, relatives make fun of you and no longer have anything to do with you. You know, so you're ostracized to a certain degree. That's about as much as we experience, you know, in the country that I live in. Other countries, people pay with their lives. Uh, it costs them everything to follow Christ. Well, God sees that. If they persevere, if they don't fall back and deny Christ, if they continue you know, in the faith, ultimately one day they can look forward to receiving the crown of life, eternal life, which God has promised to those who love him. Okay, you got it? Okay, I hope, I hope you do got it. And uh, naturally, if you've been forced from your home and you're living, uh, you know, as a, a refugee uh, far from home because you're a faith in Christ, well, you're, you know, you're facing a trial. And in keeping with that, you're going to be tempted in that kind of a trial to abandon your faith, to, you know, to throw away what is the real reason for your trials to escape your trials. Right? Right. And that, I think, uh, lends itself to the very next verse we're about to read, James 1 and verse number 13. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. See, sometimes commentators will look at these verses and they'll say, you know, James is kind of a scatterbrained guy, just new topics popping up all over the place, kind of unrelated, and he does return to them later in his epistle. I don't think the, the, James was a scatterbrained guy at all. I don't think these things are unrelated. I think they're perfectly related. People who are going through trials are also facing temptations. People who are going through major, major trials, you know, when you paid a huge price for your faith in Jesus Christ, you're going through major temptations. And the, one of the temptations would be to, to, to kind of adopt kind of a fatalistic uh, posture over the whole thing. Well, because God is sovereign, you know, he's the one who's actually orchestrated all this. And, and, and so it wouldn't be wrong for me to yield to a temptation that's really a temptation that has come from God. And so that's why James has to address that because, you know, these folks are tempted to, to blame God for their temptation and then therefore justify giving in to their temptation, all right? Well, uh, James is gonna tell us the real reason that we're tempted and we're out of time, so we'll have to talk about that in our next segment. So I'll see you next time. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.